Chris, we got to start with you know, Tyrese. 52 points. Um, he really stepped it up from the second half on. Uh, I mean, when you guys needed a basket, he came and delivered. Well. Yeah, the biggest thing is, is he did not want to come out. I tried to sub him out a couple times in a rotation, and he just kept saying, "I'm, coach, I'm, I'm good." He really, he really wanted to give us a shot to try and win it, right? And obviously, 53 minutes is is a lot, but he was he was uh, determined to try to get a, help us get a win tonight. I thought he was. I don't know, that's as fast as I've seen him in a while. He really was turning on the Jets a lot, I thought, and uh, making things happen. What were you all able to do defensively in that second overtime uh, to keep the ball yeah, out of Wemby's Yeah, I mean, first of all, Nico was doing a great job just individually, um, but I thought our ball pressure picked up from around the, the perimeter. I think, we, I think we jarred a few loose when they were just trying to get get it into him and then we jarred one loose from him too so it was basically just good old fashioned ball pressure and and came th came that that ended up being a huge benefit just at the right time yeah what does it say about your guys to do this on a back to back to really fight their way through it and play so many minutes yeah pretty good too and i think you know again we had a couple of nice uh wild card guys right ricky council I can't remember last time he's played like meaningful minutes for us. Play was really a, a huge factor in the game. Jeff Doughton came in, played good. Who doesn't play for us very, very much either. So um, to to do that, I think, and I thought I thought Paul Reed had a good game, but you know there was some guys, our normal rotation guys, that were kind of feeling the back to back. I thought tonight, and we had to throw some extra guys in there and end up playing a lot of minutes. So it was good. Yeah. Do you mind dissecting Ricky's performance a little bit more, sort of checking in late? You don't expect to end up getting 10 extra minutes at the end, but what he was able to do on both ends? Yeah, I, I would say um, he was really good at the defensive end, right? He really was, like, disrupting rhythm, picking up full court. Like, he was really moving his feet, keeping his guy in front, like making the start of their offenses take a long time, and that ends up, you know, that all usually ends up helping. So that first and foremost, he was great there. And then, you know, Ricky's kind of like, if he gets some space, he's going to go downhill too. And and uh, he made he made uh, a layup. He got fouled. An incredible pass out to Nico with the left hand wrap around. That was really, you know, kind of the you know the dagger play a little bit. So he was good. He's plays hard. Plays hard. You, you talked about uh, Tyrese not wanting to come out. Like this was one of these games where you look at it like, okay, we don't have three starters. The guys look kind of sluggish, flat. Um, and then that third quarter, he picked it up. But then it got to a point. It seemed like it became a little contagious because then Nico mm -hmm. hit a hit a big shot. Mm -hmm. And then in the second overtime, and then over, I mean overtime, other guys were hitting big shots. And it just seemed like the team had some life. And I'm pretty sure as a coach, you like to see them respond like that. Yeah, so I think I think um, we we you you probably remember some of these games. I think that like when we first started with Joel out, you know, there was it was some nights where offense was really hard. Except on the nights that Tyrese kind of came out at the start and just kind of gave everybody a jolt of like, oh man, a jolt of confidence. And, and you know, like at Utah was a good example. You know, one of those you know like some of those games. So I think that same kind of applies here. I think I think we came out really good. Really good. I mean, I thought we were playing really solid, and then we kind of hit the back-to-back -back wall, and and you got to kind of keep fighting, fighting. I, I kind of was, I kind of was okay. I thought, I thought we were gonna, you know, maybe get a resurgence of of energy, and and then it just comes down to who can who can outwill who in a long-minute game like that. Yeah. What what was the play where Maxie was able to cut to the basket? get the, the layup on the timeout. What was it? Yeah. Yeah, we just we ran a couple shooters off the there and set a back screen and again he just fast. I mean it's like you know, even if you know what's happened or you switch it, he kinda just ran right by the, the switch, I think. So and and Abatoon made an unbelievable pass, so that was huge, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about Nico. There were three sort of down the stretches, right? And it felt like he made an impact in all of them yeah. as an inbounder, as a shooter, as a defender. I mean, we say it all the time, but what a luxury has it been to have 
Well, again, he does so many things, right? Like he's really working on D. He's he's our best passer, right? And then if then he can step in and make a make a three, and he's again experienced guy that's not gonna like. He's played a zillion games at all kinds of super high levels, and and he's just another shot for him, right? So, but he's just good all around player with with uh, tremendous leadership too. Good, everybody. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks,